Hi there, Dr. Andrea Schanowski from Freedom Chiropractic and Holistic Health and the Peoria Metro Center and our YouTube channel, Health and Horsepower. This week and this month, we're going to be focusing on stress and how that affects many other body systems. So this week, I want to talk a little bit more about how specifically stress can be keeping you up at night. So you may or may not know this, but when you're under stress and especially chronic stress, that can actually cause issues with energy production in your body and also interfere with the hormones that are necessary for sleep. So a lot of times we may notice that not only are we getting fatigued in the middle of the day, may notice that even after a full night's of sleep, we're waking up and still feeling very tired or like we didn't get enough sleep, but you may also notice that you're having trouble getting to sleep or staying asleep and waking up many times throughout the night, or even if you had a full night of sleep, again, waking up and feeling like you had none at all. When it comes down to it, we have to understand that sleep deprivation or not getting enough sleep due to insomnia can actually cause not only mental difficulties where you can't process or function well, but it actually will increase your cardiovascular risk. It can cause high blood pressure problems, and it can also lead to issues with mood disorders like anxiety and depression. Um, some research has also shown it increases inflammation levels and thus your pain and it's also a risk factor for obesity as well. So sleep is really essential when it comes to recovery and healing. When your body is sleeping, it is recovering, it is regenerating, it is basically healing from the activities of the day. But if you're not getting enough sleep and your body can't keep up with that deficit, so if you're injuring yourself from the things you're doing on a daily basis and your posture and how hard you're on your body, and then you're not able to sleep and fully recover, every single day you're going to be chasing that deficit. And eventually we can have some health issues come about from that. Um, sleep can actually take your body out of fight or flight mode. So if you're under chronic stress and you're not getting enough sleep, without having that sleep, your body is going to stay in that fight or flight mode, which means your body is going to be focused on basically keeping blood sugar in your bloodstream to deal with the stress of life, but it's also going to stop your body from losing weight. It's going to make your body gain more fat. It's going to cause you to have issues where you can't sleep, you can't digest, you can't heal, and that can, again, contribute to a lot of other health issues. But um, digestion is a big one because if you are eating the right foods and your digestive system isn't working, we can see a lot of nutritional deficiencies from that that can lead to mood disorders. Uh, we can see mood swings and hormone imbalances. We can see issues with autoimmune conditions. We can see issues with healing. Many different systems are affected. Um, I know at the beginning of the month, I posted a video talking a little bit more about all of those systems and how they're interrelated. Uh, I really want you to understand that sleep actually helps you to recover from the day pulls you out of that stress mode and helps your body to recover and be able to bounce back from the day's activities. So that's going to actually calm multiple body systems. Now, when we are under stress, that's going to increase your cortisol level. Now, if cortisol is high, that will actually prevent your body from producing melatonin, which is a sleep hormone. So when you're in that fight or flight response due to chronic stress, your cortisol level goes up, your brain is like running 100 miles an hour, and that's going to stop you and prevent you from being able to sleep, but actually stay asleep because if you don't have enough melatonin, you may be waking up many times throughout the night. Now, I am not typically one that recommends taking melatonin unless you've been tested and found to be deficient. In many cases, I find that we may need adrenal support. We may need to look at protein. <laughs>